Mouth Radio. What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Comedic Energy, and this is Dirty Mouth Radio. Dirty Mouth Radio, produced by Livewire Sound and Entertainment. It's your girl, Golden. Your girl, Sade. What's poppin', people? Hey, hey. It's really good. It's really good. We got a lot to talk about. I'm going to start off with Sade and the Dubai trip. Yeah. Oh, Lord. On them camels and shit. Yeah. 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 Want the chocolate girls to Dubai. Hey, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, black women, yeah, they love us over there, guys. Go over there. You'll feel like the queen that you are. <laughs> um, they wanted to take millions of pictures. Um, I feel like they can be a little rude. Just a little. Just a tad. Cause you know foreigners don't like to say excuse me. So I'm, I'm, you know, with them elbows. Hey, like, I don't know you you're from New York. Me. <laughs> I'm gonna just bump you, trip you, or something, stick my foot out. Oh shit! But um, it was nice. It was hot. It's a party city. What was like the average temperature out there? A hundred. Word. But it was dry heat. It was dry. It wasn't like humid. Oh, uh, one day it was. It was just like overbearing. Word. And you know, heat and sun just make you tired. Right. Like. Oh, shit. But um, do they have air conditioning there? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Have air conditioning. You know, go to the beaches. You had to put on your burkini. Mm -hmm. Burkini. What the hell is that? It's a (laughs) swimsuit that covers you from neck to. No, actually, that is honestly the only place where um you could wear your bum bums out. What? Yeah, at the beach. Yeah, like you were naked. Like people were naked. It wasn't a you know a free for all, but you know everywhere else, you know you kind of got to be covered. Because I was scared going over because I'm like everybody like you can't be naked, so I'm like, all right, let me get these wide leg pants going on. I was telling my crew like, don't be mad when I come with this turtleneck sweater because <laughs> I, I don't need to be getting arrested over here in Dubai. Word. But I mean, we had our arms out. You just, I mean, they kind of do look at you like, oh, mm-hmm. hello, skin out, but. Word. Um, they have become more Americanized. Damn. Um, the clubs, everybody dancing like, you know, all the time dancing with each other. Um, the music is more. Um, it's a mixture. It was the club we went to was Dreads. They have that in Vegas as well. Right. But um, it was a hip hop and R and B night. But they mixed it, so it was like that whole. Uh, what you call that? They music? play like Fifty Cent shit. I mean, they play some new stuff. They play oh, some um, Afro beats. Like, they play a lot of stuff, oh, different man. stuff. So, it was cool, but I'm just, I'm getting old, so I'm over the club. I'm like, yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, ready to go, because I'm ready to go. I but it was cool. Um, we ate a lot of Americanized food. I, I tried their food, but wasn't my cup of tea. And what did you have? What, as far as? The, what, that? Their you know, cup of tea? Yeah. Um, they eat a lot of rice, but it's not like rice rice. It's like, mm, it seems stringy. Okay. Um, their chicken, yeah. Just I'm a real picky eater for the most part. So. Marsala, yeah. Like I ain't, I ain't with it. And then my crew, one of them, worldwide with wit in particular. <laughs> we Shout sat, out. we sat down uh, at a restaurant. She looking, she flipped through that damn menu probably 15 times, like, <laughs> and she looking like, I don't know what we're gonna do. I'll just get a kid's menu. So I'm like, hell Are nah. you fucking serious? We ain't going to eat here if you ain't, can't find nothing to eat. No, oh, uh, so we end up next time I talk to her. So we end up going to <laughs> Evapiano's. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it tastes nothing like how it tastes here. Really? Um, it was disgusting. Really? So, yeah, it wasn't good. Um, but uh, shout out to Worldwide Wit. If you're looking for anybody to tailor to your needs, book flights. Um, Get your itinerary together. Even if you already booked your flights, you need an itinerary um, in different countries. Like, she is your go-to girl that is worldwide with wit on Instagram. Um, When I say itinerary was very dope. Like, in our short amount of time, you know, week, we did, like, so many things. So many tours. Two weeks. No, we went for a week. Okay. And it was good enough for me. I needed to get back to American <laughs> land and my bed to my food. But yeah, um, we did so many tours. We did a desert safari tour. We did the mosque. We went to the, um, they got a Ferrari 
over there, like a museum, yeah. Ferrari well, museum. Where to go? Damn. Um, every, yeah. So, like I said, book with worldwide with wit. Just even if you just need an itinerary, um, she have you decked out, really seeing the culture of whatever country you're in. If she's already visited, and if not, she will definitely do the research. Word. But all in all, it was a good girls' trip. Um, yeah, I think everybody, for the most part, meshed well. Mm. Um, we were all new to traveling with, alongside each other, and it was five of us. Mm. Um, but, you know, you find out a lot about people when you're traveling. Right, when you have to be overnight with them and Yeah, and share close quarters. So, so, what's the problem? What's the problem? There's no you problem. Just, you just find out a lot about people. Right. You know, somebody might want the air up high. Somebody might not want the air yeah, on. Somebody might want to do this. One person don't want to do this. One person might feel left out. You know, like, it's just a lot of, you know, <laughs> things that go into planning a trip, and especially for a long period of time. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, but mine was a lot of um, transparency um, with the girls I was with. You know, some praying, some meditation. <laughs> we eating good, laugh. You know, we went around the round table with our highs and lows of the trips, what we thought was good, what we thought could have been better. Word. Whatever case it is. So it was a really uh, dope trip. Damn, man. I got to go. I got to freaking go. I was supposed to go. Yeah. Years ago. I think everybody should at least go there because it's, it's really a lot to see. And the, the architecture over there is so bomb. You just Word. like looking. It's this uh, place called Burj Khalifa, and it's like 158 floors. Damn. The tallest building in the world. And like you can go. I you can know. buy a tour and you can go see the whole. Oh, I'm going up to the hundred and fifty. Is, is that the um, the building that looks like a uh, head like and a, shoulders bottle and shit? Yeah. Well, that's the that's another building. That's oh, a seven okay. star hotel. Like you have to go through security to even get in that hotel. Damn, like, you like it's yeah. It's one that's shaped like something else too. It's kind of like a pyramid, the Burj Khalifa. Like I have a picture of it. I have to show you guys. Word. But um, yeah, it's really dope. And they're mall, y'all. They mall. They mall. <laughs> oh my god! You got like a ski snope in it and all of that. Yeah. Well, that's one of they malls. Okay? Oh, one of them. Yeah. I heard. Yeah, I heard they got a lot of shit yes. in the airport alone too. The airport was dope too. They got like yeah. malls in the airport. Yeah, like it's a lot of shopping in their uh, airport. You know what I never really understand is <clears throat> they <clears throat> dress high end, Gucci and Prada and Fendi mm-hmm. and all that. Then you're gonna put the burka on top of it. But and you know, with me going to the mosque <laughs> you know and wearing yeah, the burka, like because when we went to the mosque, they just have like solid burkas that you put on, like if you were just wanna go through. But I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, because I'm gonna be decked out. So we all bought our burkas and it was cool. And I was just looking at some of the women burkas and I'm just like, Yep, that would be me. I need to be bedazzled every day. But yeah, they do wear nice clothes over there, and right? Because they have money and they really don't know what to do with it. Like they're just spending on whatever. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them, of course, you know, everybody always say they got nice cars, but a lot of them do have very nice cars over there, right? Like Maybach and Rolls Royce, and you know, yeah, Range Rover. Like they really drive those type of cars. Yeah, I seen a video and they had um, like this. I guess it was junkyard over there. And they just had like abandoned cars. I was like abandoned Ferraris. Shit that still ran and drove. They just said fuck that yeah, shit. Right. I was like, yo, God damn. Like, but yeah, it was crazy. And we took Ubers everywhere. Like Uber oh, was they got our Uber friend. Out there yeah, they too? got Uber. So oh, we took yeah. Uber everywhere. Um, yeah, like a Lambo or something. Or they give you. No, for the most part, it was Toyotas. Uh, the like the vans. But a couple times we got the. Um, our last day on the way to the airport, we got an Infinity truck. It was nice. Mm-hmm. We had a Suburban. Um, we had one <laughs> one of our Uber drivers. Um, one of the girls I was with, they was they nose was a little, you know, because our driver was a little bit, you know, had a little smell to him. Uh-oh. So they they kind of said something, but I don't think they understood that he spoke English. Oh. So they kind of heard us. So we was trying to go to the uh, the Gold Souk, which is like over there where all the gold is and yeah. you know stuff so they have an old souk and a newer one which is where all the new gold is and mm-hmm. all that shopping y'all how about the driver put us out he ain't put us out but he dropped us off at the gold souk which was like the hood of dubai oh, <laughs> and was like y'all go down here yo when we 
thought about it, we like, yo, we could, he could have been sending us yeah. any damn where. Oh, shit. And then when we got to our next, like, we walked across the street to, like, the mall, and it was pointing to where the new gold suit was. And our next driver was like, yeah, that's where it is right here. And we like, it's a whole different world. He didn't put us out on the hood. It's projects on top of the stores. Word. They're closing, and we like, he didn't put us in the damn hood. Well, like, that's good that you did experience that, too. Child, so all this- <laughs> child. I <laughs> wanted to see that, too. No, I wanted to see you see it. is the, well, she the glitzy. <laughs> I mean, it's You know, nice. when you go somewhere, you only see, like, the glitzy glamour side of it. Yeah, but drive shine. People shine- two regular people. Golden, drive me through it. <laughs> Don't put me out <laughs> and <laughs> tell me to <laughs> drive me through. Don't say Oh, go down there. It's down and through there. We we just walking, looking like y'all. This is not oh, what shit. you was looking like a Latin. I was like, <laughs> you said you up for the okey doke. Bag was in the front, like okay, y'all. Oh, we need to walk shit. straight. You yeah. might have was trying to set y'all up to get um rock. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I'm what saying. Like, like, thank God we got out and walked across the street to the mall and went to the Hyatt and got picked up from there because we like, yo, we gotta get out of here. Damn. But yeah, all in all, my trip was good. And then we did a, um, our last day we went to the beach and they had like, you pay $80 and it was all you could drink and all you can eat. Oh, oh shit. With the beach and then they had an infinity pool. Oh, I had to show y'all the pictures. Word. Like when I say camels on the beach, I was in heaven, y'all. Was they butt naked on the beach too? Because you said they can have everything out. I mean, not everything out, but as far as like, that's the most skin you're going to show is on the beach. Word. Yeah. So, you know, mm. booties out. You know, I was booty out. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Uh, I gotta make the trip. Damn no, but I, I think everybody should go see, go to Dubai. Honestly. Damn, yo, that's just dope, dope as I think fuck. I got sunburned, but yeah. Yeah, I know it was worth it. It was, it was worth it. The experience was definitely. Was it worth cost it. effective though, going out there? I mean, like putting everything together from the flight. Yeah, and you know what? We didn't because everybody be like. You know, everybody was like, oh, I got to save up a lot, you know, to do it. Or I don't got enough money. Like, everybody thinks it costs a lot. And I'm sure at different times, but we really did not spend. I think we spent more money, like, on food and Ubers and stuff. Yeah. But, like, to get there, it wasn't bad at all. How long was the flight? So, we went from (laughs) uh, Charlotte to uh, London. Oh, cool. And um, that was, like, eight, eight hours, eight or nine hours. And Damn, then, Damn, and then cool. when we got to London, the first when we first got there, we actually had a layover, a long layover in London. So we got to experience London. That's nice uh, with a ten hour layover there. Mm-hmm. So we got out. Now, when I say them some damn rude foreigners, <laughs> child, and I think because they don't get no damn sun, <laughs> it's just dark and gloomy there, and it's cold. But yeah, they rude. But um, we got to see the London Eye. We went to. Um, eat you know that type of stuff but it was cool um but and then from london to dubai it was like another six and a half hours that's Damn. nice yeah okay Damn, i think cool. i could do it because i was looking at myself in no way i'm gonna be up in no air for all them hours yeah but it was broken up so it didn't seem that bad right, and yeah. like going because i had work that day like Ooh. i slept the whole flight Ooh, that's no, yeah, I was good and not. Now man. coming back when Drooling we left Dubai, what eyes wide open? <laughs> My girl, like, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you was knocked. But yeah, um, when it's broken up like that, I can do it. But yeah. I don't like that straight, eighteen hours straight or nothing. Like so, yes, everyone go to Dubai if you can make it. Just plan and prepare. But it really was not that much money. Yeah, that ain't bad, man. Dope. What y'all got going on? Well, you go ahead, go. What have I been up to lately? Nothing much. <laughs> got nothing. I got Word. nothing. I went to the Apple Festival in Lincolnson. It was my first time going there. It was all right. I went with my uh, daughter's Girl Scout troop. It was pretty cool. Okay. It didn't get rained out. Like, no, it didn't about. rain. That was the good thing. Damn. That ain't bad. Yeah, so uh, I went to, um, where did I go to? Charleston, and I went to uh, Myrtle Beach for my birthday. Okay, Charleston. Yeah. How was it? I know uh, Charleston probably ate some good food. Yeah, Seafood, oh my that gosh. That was good as hell. Yeah. I went to, um, so we pretty much, it was me, Constance, her best friend, 
and my homeboy met up later. So we we spent four days down there, and we her um, Constance's homegirl stayed in Myrtle Beach because oh. I kind of fucked up because. We kept flip-flopping between Myrtle That's Beach and Charleston. <laughs> <laughs> so she ended up getting a hotel in Myrtle Beach, but she stayed with us in Charleston. Okay. So, I, I mean, we had a big enough room. Shit was straight. So we went to Myrtle Beach. We picked her up, stayed down there for a little bit, and then headed to Charleston and came back and did the same thing. Charleston, man, like, that shit was dope as hell. Yeah. That was my very first time going down there. And, like, we went to, we did a couple things. Um, so we went to uh, downtown Charleston. Mm-hmm. And there was this little market, yeah. the old slave the old market. Slave. Right. I, I didn't get to go the last time I went. <clears throat> Man. Okay. So when somebody tells you we're going to go to the old slave market, what you thinking? Uh, there's going to be some blocks up there and some rusted up chains. No bullshit. <laughs> it was nothing like that. It was like a big ass Flea market. flea market. I was just like, damn. And when I say that shit was long as fuck, I was tired of walking. Yeah. That shit spanned it. They said it spanned it like four blocks, like a whole mile. And it was literally walking through like a open structure, like 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 you're walking to, into a house, okay. but you keep going down and keep down going, and down and down walking. and down. That shit, that shit was dope as fuck. We, um, we talked to this lady who, um, Made sweet grass baskets. Have you ever okay. heard of that shit? I think I've seen somebody weaving I've seen something that, out there doing it. Yeah, like, and she, I'll put it on the, um, when we upload this episode, I took a video of it and I okay. kind of interviewed her a little bit. And uh, I put that, that shit up so everybody could see it. But I didn't know, it's a whole story to that. That's right. what they used to do. It's a dying art, everything. And when you can, when you get the basket, you can actually smell it. So, when um, Constance's sister got the basket, we went to this other guy, and he was Gullah. And he had a bunch of artwork, okay. and he saw the bag with the basket in it. He was like, can I see the basket? I just want to see the basket. He was like, can I smell it? So we all looking at him like, what the fuck? He was, <laughs> he was like, yo, you want to smell the, the basket? What the fuck? So everybody looking at him funny, he said, no, this is what you do. You actually smell the basket. And when you smell it, it just smells so sweet. I was like, oh, wow. oh, it's... Is it comes from? I, I can't. Let me not lie, because I don't know where it came from with the actual um, the actual grass that they use. Mm-hmm. But they used it with like rice when they dry out rice. Okay, it's it's a whole bunch of uses for it. And man, I'm it, it's it's crazy when we go down there, which we will do as a podcast. All y'all gonna understand what I'm talking about. That shit was just crazy. And we did a little something outlandish, man. I went to um, one of the museums that was a, um, a um, what do you call it? Um, a slave auction. It was okay. a slave auction house. They turned it into a museum. And when we went there, of course, we was pissed coming out of there. Were y'all crying like all, everybody cries I, when they come from out there? No. Ain't nobody crying. I was mad as shit. Fuck that bullshit. But what pissed me off even more, I sat there and I looked and it was, and I ain't got no shade against it, but it was more white people there than black. That's what kind of pissed me off. So under the slave market, which which was a, like a block or two away from this museum, under the actual building, right, above it is the Confederate Museum. Museum of the Confederacy, all that shit, right? right? So I said, fuck it. I'm going into that goddamn museum. So the museum had these big ass doors, everything was closed off, like you can't see inside that shit. I said, fuck it. I'm walking up in that bitch. I walked up in that motherfucker. And I told Constance and her her best friend, I said, y'all come with me, y'all can't. It don't matter to me, but I'm going up in that bitch. But if I don't come out in 30 minutes, you grown up in that motherfucker. <laughs> and you see what the fuck going on. So it was like, fuck it, we'll go. So when we talked to the lady with the sweet grass basket, she said, yeah, nobody goes up there. They just don't. You already know why. I said, fuck it. I was like, well, how much is it? She was like, I heard it's $5. I said, $5? I'm walking my black ass up in there. When I walked through that goddamn door, 
at you. They like, looked at me crazy as <laughs> shit. There was this one old lady, right? <laughs> she is staring in my face like I'm a fucking ghost. So I stand behind Constance and her sister. <laughs> so you know my black ass. I'm looking at her with the same damn look she giving me and shit. Like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm here. Like, What's I'm up? just giving her the damn Martin motherfucking look and she looking at me and shit. So the cop, there's a cop in there and he's sitting at there chilling because he think he in his element and shit. This motherfucker jumped up so goddamn fast oh. just to just to stand there and shit and be on guard and shit. So we noticed that shit from the jump. Right. So when we started going around that shit, I'm still looking at people like, God damn, they up here? Oh, shit. It's three of them. Now. They're going to bring up more people and shit. They just looking and shit, right? Right. So I'm like, okay. I already peeped how this shit is. It's real tense in this motherfucker right now. But then I started looking at the artifacts and shit that they had in there. And I started reading shit. I was like, this shit don't make no fucking sense. So when you go to any other museum, you know, it's like an expert that's fucking typing all this shit up and you reading it, right? Mm -hmm. So when I start reading some of this shit, the shit was like somebody fucking little sister typed up the motherfucking shit. Lord. Cause so, they fucking retorted. I was like, right. I was like, what the fuck? This, and, and a lot of this shit was opinionated. Right. It was like this, so they had this cannon in there, right? So they was like, this may have been the very first cannon ever created and shit. Right. No, no lie. Like, right. yeah, I was like, dog, you got to be fucking kidding me. So you don't know if this, this shit is the actual, like, I was like, yo, I'm fucking done here. Like, if, even if it wasn't the first one, they should have put this is a replica. Yes, I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? I swear it was like them motherfucking staff members just typed this shit up and was like, fuck it, we gonna put this shit in here. Yeah, we gotta come up with something yeah. for our people. And the shit was small as hell. It was like, it, it was like, I thought you was gonna tell me it was like stuff from, it was like artifacts from. From pe- you know, from people like the beginning of time, not from, like, you know, from people from the Civil War. You it know, was, older but people. that's the thing. And it they was, had their pictures with their flags or something like. Mm, this the, is and little Johnny there was, there was the not, there was one Confederate flag in there, and they said that it may have been the very first Confederate. Flag. <laughs> may have been. <laughs> Well, and the capital had, of the Confederacy is in Richmond, Virginia, so yeah. I'm sure the first one would be there. Man, and it had like some blood and some gunshot holes in it. And it shit. needs some gunshots in it. <laughs> it needs some bullet like, holes in it. Now I was like, what the fuck? This shit was just the dumbest was damn place, thing I've place ever cool. seen. Like, yeah, that shit was crazy as fuck. And me, you know my ass. I was, I was making sure I... Stood next to other white motherfuckers just to wait for them to say some shit. I was just ready. Like, say one motherfucking thing and I'm gonna just go the fuck off. Like, I, I was ready. I was on some revolutionary shit. I ain't even gonna lie. But that shit, yeah, that shit was, was stupid as fuck. But all in all, going down to Charleston, man, that shit was dope. We went to this restaurant called Del Sol. It was a vegan restaurant, right? No, no. Just hear me out. Hear me out. It was a, it's a black owned vegan Jamaican restaurant. Oh, wow. That shit probably tastes good. That well. shit yeah. was good as fuck. Well. I got some nachos from that, right? I like vegan some fat boy stuff. shit. That shit was like, it had, like, it was sweet. They have jackfruit? Good. I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't bother to think about jackfruit. Yeah. But all their food was good. Like, mm-hmm. that shit, it was a hole in the wall spot. And we, we actually found a place because of one of the ladies at the slave market. She was like, I go there for sandwiches. So we was like, man, fuck it, man, go up that shit. I ain't like a damn king in that motherfucker. Yeah. And that shit, if shit was cheap and it was good, like on some real shit. So when we go down there, I take y'all to that joint, man. That shit. All in all, I had a good time. In Myrtle Beach, we stayed there a little bit. We we didn't hit too much stuff, but I went to um, uh, this big crystal shop that they had. Constance went crazy and they spent a whole bunch of goddamn money. Mm, okay. But you know, you know, all in all, it was a good fucking trip for my birthday. I That's really good. did. Hell yeah. I'm here for birthday celebration all the time. Yeah, man. That shit was fucking phenomenal. All right, man. So let's get into this joint, man. Duty Mouse Radio. Okay, so today, a co worker and I somehow got on the subject of. Whose responsibility 
is it to be protected during sex as far as for a baby? I said 50 50. He's gonna say it's 80% on the woman <laughs> and 20% on exactly. the man. Like, you know, to make sure the woman's like on birth control or, oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? It's both. Right. That's what I said. He needs to, because a woman can tell you I'm on birth control and right. not be on birth control. That's why you need to be wearing a condom. If you're not ready to be a daddy, that's what I, that's you what I was saying. You don't see that baby's hip daddy. That's what I was saying. I was saying, like, okay. Most guys, they only thinking about getting a nut. Like, that's oh, it snap, she's going to let me hit That's not true. That ain't true. selfish age. Yes. That is oh, not true. Oh, Hold up, y'all. I had to interrupt the episode real quick to let y'all know about this dope clothing line. This is Comedic Energy, and y'all know how I love my Afrocentric fashions and black businesses. Well... The Kingdom of Melanin clothing line is just one of those businesses. This particular clothing line specializes in Afrocentric fashions, from clothing to bags. I know you've seen them nice king and queen duffel bags all over Instagram. Well, this is the spot to get it and more. So check them out, and when you ready to order, go ahead and use that promo code Dirty Mouth Radio and get 10% off. All right. Now back to the show. Oh Ooh. snap! She gonna let me Those hit it wrong. Dudes, they ain't trying to do that shit. Anyways, and then and then they're not thinking about the con- consequences. Like, oh, if they only dealing with a with a shorty, like on some friends with benefits or on some on some situationship type stuff, knowing that they don't want this chick to be their baby mama. Oh my god! Then they gotta look forward to eighteen years of child. That support. ain't most dudes though. What? That that ain't. The dudes, me and the dudes that I chill with don't be thinking like that. Oh, well, I mean, well, it's a lot more mature side. men. Tell us your but. side. How, what, what percentage do you think? To be, to be completely honest, y'all going to fucking jump down my throat. But I actually agree with you, dude. Why wouldn't it be 80-20? You got to think about it like this. If you're talking about birth control, right? We got the seed. I mean, y'all got the egg. We got the seed. The seed can't grow without the egg, right? right. So you want to protect the seed from getting out, right? But you want to protect, I guess, as much but more the freaking egg. Because once that shit comes through the protection of the damn, well, the condom, which is, you know, it ain't ain't always effective, but it's going to grow. So wouldn't you want to batten down the hatches a little bit more, but I'm on saying, the egg than I'm you would the seed. I'm saying that it, it is it is on the woman to be protected too, but I feel that it should be both. It shouldn't be the burden shouldn't be mostly on the woman just because she's gonna be the one carrying it. Right. But what's the what's Y'all the both need protection. Burden, Put on a condom and be on birth control. If you're not ready to be a parent, but what's then it's the burden? Yeah. What's, what's the burden? Put it that way. Well, well, both of y'all going into a consensual 50-50 consent. So why shouldn't it be 50-50 on the protection? I'm on birth control and you wear a condom now. Or oh, I'm trying to hit it raw because I know you well, on birth no, control. Well, no, I never said that he should hit it raw. I said he should still have a condom. Well, that's, oh. the, that's the kind of way I hand. Mm. Uh, and because some of y'all pull out game is weak. <laughs> whack. <laughs> whack. Uh, hey, Whackity whack. I can't speak for them dudes, man. Is what it is. We know you pre- preparing for a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That shit. I don't know. I can't believe. I, I don't know. That shit is. That's an interesting conversation. When it comes. What to do you that. guys think? Do you think it's solely on the woman or the man when it comes to protection? I mean, I really think it should be 50-50 or greater. But when I say or greater, I say on greater with the the female, like because think, of y'all y'all are the reason why it's gonna grow. Right, but it ain't I gonna feel be like, us. I but feel evil. like when when it comes down to the responsibility aspect of it, okay, of course the woman is carrying the baby, and it's going to be on her if the relationship doesn't work to take care of the kid. But it the the burden as far as financially is going to be a strain on the the guy if the woman puts them on child, child support. support and then you mad but then you on the brink of homelessness <laughs> your <laughs> life is suspended oh you up in jail oh cause you but got yeah, behind but that's why it's on both I think honestly but I've always been raised 
if you get pregnant, guess what? That is your child. Yeah. Because a man can walk out whenever they choose. You could be married and that right. man can walk out. I mean, that's true. That's the best that, of the that, best relationship. But I've that always been taught. True. And that, I think that's a horrible mindset, but... It's one that prepares you for the real. Life is and the statistics of everything... That child is your child as a woman. Yeah, yeah. Because these men. All laws aside, it came be from you. Gone. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so. Yeah, that shit. That's my mindset. Mm. That shit crazy. Sad but true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, y'all been following the news? Yeah. Yeah. It's been rough out there. So, last Everybody. time we talked, a year ago, uh, we were talking about the whole Trump shit, right? Okay. So now we coming up again on some shit for 2020. What do y'all think about this Trump shit? Do y'all think, first of all, do y'all think this motherfucker's going to get impeached? Hell no. No. Why or why not? Because they love his last year's shitty draws. <laughs> when I say they, I mean the people that voted for him. Yeah, mm. I don't think he's going to get impeached at all. No, they can't but why see don't no you wrong. Think, they can't see no wrong in anything that he does, even when he blatantly... On, um, on they all calls. be coming out and saying like all the people that run with him that's under his administration they be saying exactly mm-hmm. what is going on and how he do stuff but nobody sees nothing that he does wrong I think they fucked up I, I think they waited too late to try to impeach him right that, that's my, my mindset on that shit like you, I mean, gone. like we like we said before man the man was on tape talking about grabbing him by the pussy like you don't need no more concrete evidence than that. It sound like that motherfucker. Right. But they ain't try to go and impeach him. And they waited till the last fucking minute till it came to that Ukraine shit and Biden's son to actually right. go at it. And now we coming up, because aren't they about to be doing elections again next year? Yeah. Right. So it's like, I don't, I'm not a Trump supporter, but the niggas... Just let the nigga finish the shit out. No, I ain't with that. Why? Why not? I mean, he gonna have to. He gonna. He, I mean, it's what gonna you mean? happen. You talking now? about for twenty twenty? You think he should get reelected? Fuck no! I'm oh, saying just oh, finish, oh, finish what now. the fuck he oh, already fucked okay. up. Yeah, because don't nobody want his running mate to be up there, Mike Pence. I was like, that's <laughs> the same thing, basically. That's, that might even be worse. That yeah, from what I heard, that that shit would be worse. Yeah. And then this motherfucker is inciting motherfucking civil war and shit. Talking about if we get impeached, motherfuckers are going to go crazy. Please. But, like, he said that shit, but I think that shit might be true. All them motherfucking white supremacists and shit, I think they would go crazy if that motherfucker did get impeached. Well, but he, he not doing nothing for them. Either. Right. Just like he but them nothing. motherfuckers don't realize that shit because they think he Jesus and shit. They pray to that motherfucker, man. They don't see that it's shit. Well, everybody pray to somebody. That's the I, I feel thing. like they even be embarrassed. To even be representing this man, I don't like when 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 they. <laughs> I have to tell y'all about that later. What speak on? I just feel like they just when 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 you be around certain people that you work with, and you thought they was cool, and then all of a sudden. You find out they look, looking at Fox and Friends or listening to some <laughs> some satellite radio praising mm-hmm. Trump. You just have to be like, okay, okay. Let's see where you coming from now. Yeah. I think it's crazy that there's a whole lot of Latino people yes. that are so in support of Trump. Yes, when I realized really? that too, I was like, Silly. "What?" I never, yeah, I never really thought about that shit. For any like, previous president, it's like to me, it's like okay, it's like I'm here now, my family here now, so fuck the rest of the mugs that's trying to get here, mm-hmm. build a wall, yeah, don't let these like, motherfuckers in here. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I, I never understood the the viewpoint with that shit. Like, and I think sometimes the people are just so caught up in a money issue where they think that you know the Republicans are against welfare and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, more Caucasian people are on it than. Black or Latino exactly. people. Well, they be getting exactly. busted for welfare fraud. It'd be about 20 And they be millionaires. Joints. They be fucking millionaires on welfare and shit, man. Like, 
I don't know. And then when people be like, oh, I'm living the American dream, I'd be like, well, what's your American dream? A nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, that shit always boggled my mind, and I didn't know that there were so many. And when I say so many, like the people I come across who are Latino and, and right. support Trump with that shit. I just think they confused. I think they are too, but I, I try to really hear them out to see why. Some of them, true. Some of them, they kind of have a viewpoint that I fought to get over here. I did it. Legally, and everybody way. else is just trying to jump the fence to get over. But I'm like, you say it like it's, it's that simple. I'm sure it's not just I'm gonna jump the fence to get over. Right. And then you also got to think about how bad was your situation getting over here compared to theirs. Right. Because that shit, I know that shit ain't nice. Right. You know, and you, you and that motherfucker that here. came over here. Like, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, dog, like for, fucking for real. And uh, they and the people that's coming over here. They're risking their life to get exactly. here. Exactly. They risking their life all the way up. The journey itself is risking. Exactly. Then you got ice agents. Mm-hmm. It's like you risking your life all the Children way around. Being by themselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like it's because they probably don't have yeah. the opportunity to get over there just like you did. Or how you did. You know, like ah man, that shit. I don't know. It's like they fucking heartless when it comes to shit like that. You know? Mm-hmm. But, you know, everybody is always out for themselves. If I could do it this way, you can too, but it ain't the same. Mm-hmm. Things change. Yeah, I don't fucking understand that shit, man. So, what... Bring it, breaking it down politically like this, how do you guys feel? Well, what, what side are you guys on? Are y'all on kind of a democratic side when it comes to politics and things like that? Are y'all on a Republican side or how are y'all in the middle? Or? I vote Democrat. You vote Democrat? I'm Democrat. Yeah. Democrat. Okay, I'm Democrat, but I I keep it real with y'all. I ain't vote for this last one. I ain't vote. Daniel. <laughs> you gonna make me hurt you. I, I didn't vote this yeah, last excuse, one. Excuse us why we you take know, this break while just... we whoop his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, hold up. Let me just let me just come to you on this throw the whole name break. out there. Okay. Let me just energy, bad energy. <laughs> we got bad energy over here, y'all. But but think about it like this, man. Well, you can't talk no shit if you ain't vote now. Nah, no, no, think about well, it like this. How many people fought and died for you to be able to go cast your ballot, even if you voting for the see, lesser we, of two evils? We we talked about that. We talked about that. It's like I still think that the times have changed. When it came to that shit, it okay, was a fight to vote. But still cast your damn vote, whether you agree or don't agree. I still need you so out with there. So Hillary, it. Trump, I guess the lesser of two evils, I can't even say that. You can't even, you don't know who the lesser of two evils would have been. You don't, but. You don't, but I'm sure she wouldn't have did none of this dumb shit that he you did. You sure? Because she, she got some shit on her too, though. Right. I mean, everybody got shit with him. Not Everybody. like her and her husband. Right. Everybody has shit. You got shit. I got shit. I got a lot of shit. I mean, that's true too. Golden got shit. Everybody got shit. But we're going to take the less of the shit. <laughs> or what we think is going to be the less of the but shit. But did we, I guess we did know that he was going to be some exactly. shit. Exactly. We up knew in that he bitch. was going to be yeah. some shit. Yeah. He a damn reality t- TV. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Can't even halfway put two sentences together. He can't. Yeah. I mean, he ain't. Letter he ain't. that he sent to other countries. I'm like, shoot, my daughter can't uh, put sentences better than this. <laughs> what is this? I'm saying, we knew. We knew. I, I feel you. I, I'm just like, man, I always still think that, you know, they're a the puppet and shit, and it's, it's higher powers out this motherfucker that really regulate the country. But... I guess. Y'all, this message is not a generalization of <laughs> Dirty Mouth Radio because energy, bad energy over here. Oh, my vote. goodness. Matter really? of fact, we just... might have to put him out there at the voter registration booth. Dirty Mouth Radio. <laughs> <laughs> voter registration booth. I mean, oh, yeah, my yeah. goodness. So, do y'all know who the people that are running for it now for 2020? Um, Besides Bernie. Um, who who's still in it? Because I haven't really been following I, yeah, it. Is there Lady Kamala still in it? Kamala? Oh, where well, a lot of people was getting on her. Because she was Kamala using the N word. Is that that girl? I ain't heard she used no N word. Was that the one? They were saying some politician that I was. I think it was a it. guy. It was a guy that used it. And he slipped up and used it. I really? forgot I which one it was. So it's not Kamala, but a lot of people was. 
kind of going against her too because she, she mixed but they were saying like she believed in all the prisons and it was just a lot of stuff like they were going back and, you know of course everybody goes back into their history to see yeah. who and what but see, I man, everybody like you said, everybody got shit. Everybody has. So shit. if you keep going back in history and shit, what is that going to prove? Nothing. You just gotta see what they doing. I just honestly, you just really have to interview these people. Like they work for us. Yeah. Like that's at the true. end of the day, you got to see what they are willing to do once they get elected. Like we put these people in office, they work for us. So what are you going to do once you get that promotion? Yeah, I totally agree with that. To that seat. Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like me, like I, I'm in between. I, I'm, I'm like independent out here. Government. Yeah, just, I'm like mm, government. Green Party out here. I don't, I don't, I because I it's some shit Republican wise that I agree with, mm-hmm. and that's that right to bear arms, all that shit, CCW, all that stuff. You agree with that? Well, no, I agree with the right to bear arms. I mean, come on now, you got to protect yourself. That's really the only shit I fucking agree with when it comes to Republicans. <laughs> but Democrats don't agree with that. Right. They want to take them away. Why the fuck would I, I want to take away I my protection? Think, I don't necessarily say take them away, but I feel as though... How many weapons do does one person need? I need I, all these, <laughs> And I don't got none. <laughs> Stockpiling weapons and yeah, see, 3D printed guns. Like, what are and, you preparing for? That's, that's why I say I'm in the middle because do you really need a damn armory out this motherfucker? Right. No. But do you need something to protect yourself? Yes. I agree. I got multiple guns. I ain't got no whole damn stockpile of shit. But I, I got my stuff to keep myself protected. I do. Now, do you do you have it to keep yourself protected or do you have it because it's like... Um, recreation. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Your recreation, your place or the thing that you... It's a little bit shiny of both. Thing I like to go to, to the gun range. I like to shoot my shit. I mean, I don't just keep that shit on the wall like a trophy. Nah. I I go to the range. I but that's collect the thing. Them. I feel like a lot of people just have them just to have them. And that's where, you know, shit be happening. Because I can just go grab these guns just because... The, the people who mm. got the, the issues. That got all that shit, shit. got tanks and all that crazy ass shit. And that's because there's no cap on, you know, how many Mm -hmm. guns. And you have have a gun in every corner of your house. Like, what? What? Who do you expect to invade your house? Now, I do. I do know somebody that that has done that. They literally have one in every room, which is, I mean, kind of goes back to how it used to be. Now it's time for the history, I guess, but. When it came to when it was uh, segregated times and stuff like that, we used to do that. That used to be common in black households. I mean, but, because you had the Klan and shit and all that right. shit. They had that shit in every room, and they still adopt that mentality to the day. Can you fault them? I mean, that still is protecting your shit. To have it in every room right above that door seal, that's what they used to do. I can't fault them for that. But I'm talking about Caucasian people. Oh. I, I mean, because who, who are they getting ready for? Each other? Because <laughs> they know they ain't getting ready for us. I don't know. You got you got a bunch of crazies on both sides, honestly, because you got some that think the world going to end. Right. And they, some that talking about civil war and shit, and I got to be ready, and I got to buy all these damn ARs and shit because they're going to take it from us and all that shit. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, you got your crazies all over, man, but I don't know. Me, I'm just like... I like guns. I like to shoot them. It's I, I fun. Like I don't. I don't buy them like crazy because I ain't got that kind of money, you know. But I got my my couple just so I can be protected. I don't. I keep my shit in a little protected area. And I get to it if I need to get to it. That's really all I use it for, you know. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Everybody else think differently. I don't know. But I don't agree with them taking it from people. I don't think you should do that shit. That's what do you, what do you cool. mean? Why would they take it from you? Give me an example. Well, of a, of, 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 of a well-minded, sound person, and you getting your weapon taken well, from you. Well, I think me. they need to do like a mental check or something. Yeah, Honestly, I just see what I just have all of. But these I guns. mean, at the same time, how many? What's not going to say you come in here and you exactly. pass this test and you a sound man and then exactly. you snap when you leave here? Exactly. Have the mental checks the ain't going to do it. Or they, or they so they crazy might. that they play same when they there and know damn well they yeah. crazy as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a 
It needs to be something. It's like it, it don't matter how much regulation you do though, it can still happen. Like it can. It's I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know what what would be the rest, best route because if you take them away, nobody's protected. If you keep it as is, everybody's just going crazy and shit. So I don't know what the the median between both of that would be. You know? Yeah. If legislation shit won't work, I think maybe. Because there's technically legal, um, it's illegal to have fully automatic weapons. You can't just find shit that just, you can't find that shit. That shit is illegal. (laughs) But ARs and stuff, maybe, (laughs) I think, I think we don't need that shit. No. Or or limit that shit to one, I guess. You could put it, put it that way. I mean, for a normal person that's not in the military or the police, what will you need to continue? Because automatically, you keep firing and see you out of bullets, which well, is... When- you got fully automatic, and you have a semi-automatic. Everything is pretty much semi-automatic. You got semi-automatic pistols, you got all that stuff. So explain that to me. So, so when you're firing, you can keep going for how many rounds? Technically, no. You can only fire once. Every time you hit that trigger, you're shooting. So you can't just keep your finger on the trigger and it just goes crazy. That's fully automatic. That's what's illegal. Oh, that's what you can't get, okay. you know, unless you are military and all that other shit. Well, I'm military. If you, I mean, but even if you are military, you got to get, there's a separate type of license to get that type of weapons. And then when you get that license, the then government got to come. Your ass. Well, yeah, they're going to be on you, but they also come to your house like every year. They got to check oh, on that shit. Yeah, they, you know? it's a lot of shit you got to do to have that type well, of never gun. mind. I'm not military. <laughs> 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 but it's like, I mean... Now, going down to semi-automatic, an AR can shoot just the same as a pistol. You shoot it once, you take your finger off that trigger, you pull it again, you shoot it again. You just hit your finger on that trigger a little more to get them shots off a little faster. Mm-hmm. So, is it really a big deal having an AR compared to a pistol now that you know that? Yes or no? I wanted to know exactly how many rounds, though. Like, so I thought it was like so- you can shoot more people. <laughs> 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 These mass shooters be shooting mad people. They do. They do. I mean, because you, you gotta- acting like it's gonna take time. From what I see on TV, don't take no time. Well, Everybody I mean, dead. See, you could talk about the bump stops and all that other stuff, which I don't have too much knowledge on. I guess it kind of helps you shoot a little quicker. What? Which, what, you know, that's pretty much what it comes out to. So you can shoot a little faster. But when people got them type of guns, I mean, it's it's the magazine size. That's kind of oh, how they okay. get them. Because you can get a 100-round drum on a damn gun. I mean, okay. remember uh, Big Trini said that on the episode before. You could put a 100-round mag on a, a drum on a gun and take out just as many as you can with a pistol. It's all about your accuracy and how many times you put your finger on that trigger. That's what it comes down to. Now, what was I going to say? But, okay, in all actuality, what does a normal person need with an AR? I, and that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know what a normal person Nothing. would. Because, I mean, if you, you walking around, you who, who the fuck just going to walk around with a damn AR like you could walk around with a pistol? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't, I don't think so. Now, I will say somebody should have a shotgun, but not an AR. You get what I'm saying? I mean, a shotgun is something that you can kind of keep in the house to be protected, but people will say the same thing for an AR as well. But me, I like I like shotguns because it's kind of just my preference, but you can use it. It's kind of, it's a little more mobile, one shot, kind of sprays. It kind of does the damage. You know, some people argue, well, it'll do damage to your house, but if you have a target and you use that, that shotgun and you use a slug or you use a bird shot, you can kind of hit that target a little better, in my opinion. You now, know? with the shotgun, you can have a warning bullet in there that does nothing. I mean, you could do the same for any gun. You could okay. put a pellet in there and it still okay. will be less lethal. You know? I just... I don't know, man. I'm just... I don't think we need the ARs, honestly, in my opinion. I'm not a, a big AR person. I don't be shooting all that shit. I just protect myself and just go to the range every now and then. That's what I do. I'll keep a shotgun all day. But, but that goes into the political debates because you got the Republicans that want the guns and the Democrats that don't. 
Well, the, let's keep it real though. They they getting they getting their pockets greased by these uh, the NRA and the and the makers yeah. of these weapons. So, of course they're gonna be for them. Yeah, yeah. And then every time there's a mass shooting, the sales of ARs go up because yeah, they think the they're gonna part. take them away. That's the sad part of it. Mm-hmm. It is. It's unfortunate as hell, man. I don't. I don't. I don't understand it. Speaking of that, what do you have to say uh, about that uh, coach that um, stopped the shooting? Oh, stopped the shooting. I I seen the video, but I didn't hear any any like witnesses talking about it or anything. Well, like I that. saw that. I saw him talking about it. They had a press conference, and I guess they showed the video previous where he was coming in the school and he he was sneaking it under his coat. Yeah, trench coat. Yeah, yeah, trench coat. And then I guess the teacher came in the classroom and seen him acting off, and then seen him with the gun. I think he was on the shoot himself. Really? Yeah, right. he was supposed to shoot himself. I guess. And then I mean, I praise the dude. Like you would. I mean, first of all, we not gonna know everything because we looking right. at just the video. Right. But from what I saw, it seemed like he was talking to him, kind of coming to him face to face, being humble, like you don't need to do this. And he kind of broke him down, just like a damn hostage negotiator would. Right. And he broke him down and got the gun away from him. That was like you textbook. Know, maybe the guy my, just my needed man. some love. You know, yeah. like he was going through stuff. You know, he wanted to kill himself because it said he wanted to shoot himself. And, you know, he took the gun and hugged him and talked him down and all that. But he's not, the, the, the kid is not getting any, any time. And he's, I guess, being made to get mental health treatment. Do you feel like he needed charges brought against him? Probably he brought bringing a in, gun to school. Probably yeah. bringing the yeah. gun to school, yeah. I think. But because... With the intent. Because you, even though he said he had the intent to kill himself, you never really know nobody's You still really got intent. the intent to shoot yeah. anybody but else. But because of the severity of it and how the coach talked him down and nothing happened, I could see them saying why he's not getting charged with anything. And, and this kid mental. is not a black kid. I feel... Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, he should have got something. He should have got something more. I than felt just like mental. that too. I felt like that too. Because like how old was he? And he how was old in like high school, high, right? high school. Yeah. And how old can you be to get a shotgun? I don't, I'm not. He really probably a ain't gun just. Fan. He probably stole it from his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, eighteen. 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 Is to get a shotgun, right? Kind if of you can go to yeah. Walmart or yeah, whatever. You can literally yeah. go okay. up there like you shopping and get a shotgun. He probably ain't yeah. had to go to the store. He ain't old enough to have in the cabin and he got to join. Yeah, he probably did. I think now. See, that's where I think like. There should be charges brought against him and the parent and, and the, the parent. Yeah, it should be because locked up. yeah, as a gun owner, you gotta have that shit locked up. That shit is tied to your name. Like this is your responsibility. Somebody takes that shit from you, you report that shit. Right. You know if that shit gets stolen, I had a gun. Uh, I gave it to somebody. You know he he bought it off me and it got stolen. Mm. So when he told me that it got stolen from him, I was like, okay, you filing that police report? We'll put my name in it. That I sold you that gun legally because they can easily come around to me because I was the one that initially bought the gun. That's right. what it's gonna come out to. So, I yeah, I fought the parents. They need to get charged with some shit, but yeah, along with his ass, like that shit is fucked up. Mental health shit. Fuck all that shit, dog. Nah, he he still agree. had the attack. I agree. The parents probably should be charged because it shouldn't have been in his in arm's reach for yeah. him to get to it. Hell yeah, man. That shit's fucked up. Mm. But that shit happens all the time. There was a case where they had um, a little boy. He was like in third grade. He brought a pistol to school, yeah. and they mm. charged the parents. Mm. As they, they charged should. the parents, That's yeah, like child abuse or child whatever endangerment yeah. is the word. Hell yeah, if he can have access to that shit. shit, he could have shot himself. The little kid, mm-hmm. right. And he bought it yeah. to school because one of the kids was bullying his ass. Oh, that's why I thought he brought it to school to show it off to his friends. Like, look, oh my, I got a gun. Nah, I think he, yeah, it was an issue. He was like, he, they said he wasn't, he he kind of showed the bully like, yeah, I'm not playing with you. Oh, wow. <laughs> what is like? <laughs> he was like, stop like messing a, with me. That's like know? a black kid. Yeah, 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 he was black, of course. Cause, yeah. <laughs> that shit crazy, man. But hey. Mm. What else, man? What else y'all got? Y'all got anything? Um, what about the Amber Guyver case, guys? No, How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? Who you talking about with the mammying from the judge and the from bailiff? From the judge to the brother. 
I don't want her to go to jail. Yeah. Had the so the mama wanted the case joint. lower. Man. The mama wanted to do Yeah, they too? said after. Like, the mom didn't hug um, her, like, from the videos and stuff. But I read an article where they were saying the mom was saying they want her time lessened. Wow. Are you serious? Lesser. Yeah. Man, that's that bullshit. I don't, I don't fucking get it, man. I think that shit is a fucking problem. I thought that judges can't be hugging no goddamn people they prosecuted. You know what? I or was, they convicted. I was looking at um something where uh, Judge Lynn Toler, she was talking about it, and she was saying that, you know, that she shouldn't have been doing it. She shouldn't have been hugging her. She shouldn't have uh, gave her a Bible because church and state is separate. Yeah. And yeah. Um, she was saying, like, you know, she has a duty to her community because that's basically what you, you basically, what are you, example, are you putting out to the community doing these types of things? Yeah. yeah. That shit, man. That's some bullshit. And they said that she was freaking, uh, Appointed by the actual Dallas PD, by the Dallas PD. which wow. was exactly. never so got now, yeah, so. and then that main witness got killed right, yeah. right after. Right. So now yeah. she's going to appeal that, and you don't have no witness now. So it's like it's some shit the judge that. was appointed by the PD. Mm-hmm. Now the witness she is wants gone. to appeal her case. Yeah, they said she. I mean, you got to think, like, what would you do if you're trying to fight to get it from in there? You, you yeah, you're going to appeal it? But... Right, but... It's bullshit. I mean, right. BS, because we know we, she did it. Mm-hmm. She's been found guilty, but... Um... That shit is fucked up. Because yeah. she got... Fuck, I don't care what anybody says. She still got support from the goddamn PD. Yeah. You know, and the motherfuckers still rock. I think it was the her. other way around, and it was a black person on the stand. That judge wouldn't have been hugging, because we've had plenty... Mm-hmm. African Americans on the stand. Ain't no hugging going on. Right. Like, no. ain't no hugging going on. Give them the max sentence. Mm-hmm. Like, all that. Like, everybody was just so nice. Like, and I'm not saying I'm all for God. I am. I love everybody for the most part. Mm-hmm. But that whole, give me a hug. And I feel like she's sorry. And, and so you can be sorry all you want to, but they don't but take from the fact that you no killed somebody. Yeah, yeah, you walked in somebody's house and killed them. Like I was shocked. And then I feel like she still out. lied on. She still ain't. Like, she still wasn't truthful about the situation, trying to pretend like she was at the wrong house. <laughs> but when That's it first what she came said. out, but when it she first, thought that she was at her house. Yeah, but when it first came out... That's crazy. How you got the key to somebody else's house? Right. So, exactly. When it first came out, they said they knew each other. Like, they yeah, dated yeah, when they it did. first yeah. came yeah. out. And, and I truly believe that. Yeah. yeah. He probably ain't he want, want her, her no more. more. Exactly. He probably was dating a sister, and <laughs> she got mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That shit is fucked up, man. And then yeah. for the bailiff to do what the bailiff was doing, I, I mean, where's the professionalism? Like, fuck everything else. Like, exactly. if you a like, bailiff, who the fuck? Uh, all other cases, when it's African, like, nobody shows no no remorse, no actions, no emotion. Mm. And here it was just so, and I'm looking like, I'm confused. Well, maybe she was. I'm going to rub her hair. I'm going to give her a hug. <laughs> Can I give her a hug? What? Can you give her a hug? Like, I'm saying. Fuck out of here, man. I mean, I'm, hey, however you may feel, but I just feel like if it was the other way around. All this emotion would not have been involved. Yeah, right. man. I think that's. And then the the damn the eyewitness. He was like supposed to be the lead eyewitness for the civil case because mm-hmm. she got a whole nother you know the civil penalties as well. But now he gone. Yeah, right. So, so what that, the hell with that? Ain't they just throw that shit out the window. Yeah, yeah. Ain't nothing gonna happen with that. That's that bullshit. It man. is. It is. Now, how do y'all feel about that situation where that? Cop came in there and killed that girl. The girl not too long ago in Dallas. That shit, well, yeah. yeah, in Texas. That shit was fucked up. Yes, it was. So it was. I mean, I read it and kind of, but it was a neighbor that called and said that her front door was open. Well, it was a neighbor that was. Um, she had called the police for something, and what the cops did was did a wellness check. Okay. Because the she had what was it her niece or nephew in her there? Right. Nephew that she takes care of. Yeah. So it turned out trying to be a wellness check, but the damn cop came up in there, didn't say anything about I'm being I'm the police or nothing like that. Came up in there, and I, I don't know, maybe the door was open, maybe it wasn't, but 
if you a cop, don't you announce that you, you a fucking cop? You announce that you're a cop. Like, you came up in there and then shot the girl. Right by the nephew. And didn't say shit. Like, just killed yeah, her. Yeah, do you understand, like, the level he gonna go through? Like, that was his caretaker and he saw all of that happen? Yeah, the like, psychological he, mentally, effects. Yeah, like, he gonna shit. be tore That shit up. crazy. And they, they charged him. They charged him with murder. They needed to. He yeah. resigned, and then they arrested him the next day. I saw that. He, he did? He, he resigned, oh, but then wow. the next day they had arrested him. Yeah, because, I mean, that was against all your protocol, right? Yeah, and yeah, everybody, they, they all have protocol. I just feel like none of them follow this shit. Yeah, oh, and, it, right. and this, this was, I want to see that movie that's coming out. It's oh, called yeah. Black and Blue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's going to be good. I yeah. want to see that. Join yeah. with Tyrese. Yeah. It's a it's a movie coming out on uh, Netflix too with um Kerry Washington. It's called American Son and it's like with the cops and I think they kill so you know of course Kerry is black mm-hmm. but the dad is white. Okay. And she's like talking to the police and they're oh, like wow. Where's my son? Do you ever do you understand? Like he I told him to put his hands on the dash. You know, like all the protocol that you tell Are you black serious? kids. Yeah. And then yeah. You know, the cop is, like, telling her some stuff or whatever. But then when the husband comes, well, the father, which is white, then they kind of like, oh, like, this is the dad. Oh, he's white. So then it's, like, a whole different side. Uh, but it's supposed to come out on uh, Netflix. That looks good, too. Really? Damn, that drink does sound good. Yeah. That's interesting right there. Mm, yeah, I want to see that, too. I finally watched The Hate You Give while I was on my flight. Oh, The Hate You Give, that was good. But I still haven't seen that? the other one. Uh you said, what was it about? Yeah, what was that? The Hate You Give? It was about um black kid getting killed on the, um in the car. Right. And a girl yeah. was the witness, young girl, his friend. Really? Whatever. And like, was, that was sad. Yeah, and the, and the, pl- the, the thing was, was she going to testify? Testify. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. And what she goes through. Yeah, and I see that shit. Yeah, that was actually good. It came out a while ago, but I finally watched it on my long-ass flight. So you got more than enough time to do that shit. Yeah, yeah but I, <laughs> I still haven't seen when they see us. I feel like I have to be in the right mindset. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, I ain't see that either. I feel like it's gonna be emotional, and it's just yeah, I feel the same way. I ain't seen it. Yet. Yeah, that shit. But I do got to see. I want to see Harriet tell me, and I want to see the cop movie. Yeah, Harriet, Harriet tell me got yeah, a movie. Yeah, yeah, girl. yeah. That yeah. Drink about to be so, real. yeah. Is she killing white people? <laughs> <laughs> Is it gonna be like definitely gonna be whooping Jingo, ass? Go uncut. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they said it's gonna be good. So I'm excited to see that. Yeah, man. We need to go see it on opening day, y'all, yeah. or weekend. So you now, know, we keep this, movies like this. Is this directed by a black person? So I heard it was uh, supposed to be directed by pink people. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yes, I say pink people. Go there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hold on, wait a minute. That's going to be interesting. That's wow. what I heard. But all in all, I think it should be good. Yeah, yeah. Still I still out. will support and see. Hey. What do y'all think about... Uh, Tyler Perry making that Black Hollywood. Man. I think I was, was so awesome. dope. Yeah. Like, yeah. it just made me tear up. Like, yeah. we are so great. And they said the studio is bigger than all three oh. studios in Hollywood combined. Combined, yes. yes. He And he I did that like, on his own, damn. y'all. Yes. Like, to know his story and where he came right. from, being homeless, yeah. right, yeah. and all that, to now, like, you creating a black Hollywood. Now, y'all understand? What shocked that ain't me. number God. A exactly. Lot, a lot of people said that he was the first to do that. No, he wasn't. No. Exactly. No. He wasn't. Now, I'm just saying it for the for the listeners and everything, but they said the dude from uh, Sister Sister. Right. He tried it, the dad, first. the father from Sister Sister. Yeah, he I tried know, it. I ain't know nothing about But I don't that. think he he had the backing for it, yeah, and, yeah, and I don't think support. he could do it all by himself or whatever the case Yeah, he be. didn't have as much as support as Tyler does. Um, but what I will say, we need to uh, protect and pray over Tyler because yeah, yeah. that's a big thing for yeah. the black community. Like right. they gonna, they gonna try something. Yeah, I just feel it, but we need to cover him. That honestly. goes into what no knowledge was saying. Remember how you saying if you go, if we always make it something, we don't ever protect it. Right. Yeah, that that's a classic case right there. Because they even it was in the news before while he was still constructing that studio mm-hmm. that it caught on fire mysteriously. Right. Yeah. 
Like they gonna they gonna try a million and yeah. one things. I just feel it, but I just think that's so dope for him to create that for us. Yeah, and named us. all the buildings after prominent celebrities. Yeah, and did y'all see how right. uh, he was so prominent about Spike Lee and how yeah. Spike Lee like that just shows character and integrity. <laughs> that I just love it. Like make your enemy. I didn't your know foot they stool. were. I didn't know they were beefing though. I didn't even. Well, know. he Spike Lee always said that all the things that that Tyler was doing was. Um, what did he call it? As far as the dressing and what do, being a man and dressing a dress, it, um, chucking and jiving and uh, yeah. what do you call it? Not um, blackface, but Conan. Like Conan. Mm. But I feel like he did what he needed to do to get to where he needed to be. Right. He started in the dress, mm-hmm. yeah, and he dropped the dress, yeah, and he started making more roles. You know, to get so I just felt like that's what he had to do to get to where he needed to be. But I mean, and he still brought people in. Mm-hmm. He made a lot of you know he brought a lot of people in. And he's still bringing people in. Um, yeah. So but he was he was telling stories even though it was a little ridiculous for him to be dressed like a woman. Mm-hmm. He's telling stories that that were relevant, relevant. that we felt yeah. and we understood. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, Spike Lee comes from the serious side of things. Yeah. And he tried to put a, a, I mean, a funny spin on it. He definitely code switched, I feel like, to get in there to do what he needed to do. Right. But that's what he needed. Exactly. So I'm, I'm I mean, okay with that. Like, I'm, he ain't got to yeah, stay that yeah, way. Yeah. And he didn't. I felt like now he's coming out and mm-hmm. doing different roles. And but, every, it's so many different actors that did the same exact thing. Jamie Foxx did Jamie it. Fox, Martin right. did it. The Wayans. Bro- yeah, yeah. Everybody like, it's has a lot. done that. And they say that. Like, and that's what one thing that I commend about Dave Chappelle because Dave Chappelle was totally against that shit. He said, I'm not wearing this dress. That's how all that shit happened with Chappelle's show. Mm-hmm. It was like they tried to put him in that dress. He said, I ain't fucking doing that shit. No, you can kiss my ass. And he left that shit. I mean, you do what you got to do. Right, you know but saying? I mean, if that's, that, wasn't his, that wasn't his thing. That wasn't yeah. his element. But Tyler Perry, you know, he... I guess, you know, he been around his aunts and his grandmas mm-hmm. and... You know he he could portray it yeah. in a funny way. Yeah. And if you if you can't do that, you can't do that. You I know feel what like I'm it's saying? just a, a to each his own type thing. He came in there with a plan. Clearly, right. right. He had a plan of what he was going to do. In my opinion, I think he just said, "Okay, fuck it. I'm gonna just do this shit real quick because I know what I'm about to do. I'm about right. to use them to my advantage. He and now look what I got. Vision and he. I executed. can't fault him for that shit. Yeah. I used to get on his ass. I ain't even gonna lie. A lot like, of man, people that shit. A lot of like, people. Like dude over here in the Madea shit again. But I, you did what you had to fucking do. And okay. I always watched. I I watched a lot of the the damn uh, plays before they came movies. Right. When they were real low budget, and I was like, dude, this shit is actually good. You know. So they always had that moral behind it. Exactly. Like you always understood. Like yeah. It was relatable. You know. Exactly. Everybody had big mama. You know. Who who everybody had that big mama role in their family and shit. Right. He took it a little further, but you know, for the most part, you can relate to that shit. So yep. I, I commend him, man. Yeah, I just think that's really dope. Hell yeah, man. Duty Mouth Radio. Well, this was a bomb ass episode. This is pretty good. You know, crazy new crazy ass on wasn't on this joint, so we got to spit some real shit without no bull, no craziness. Right, without the <laughs> food livery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had culture lessons, gun yeah, lessons. Yeah, man. We had we had a lot of lessons today. She was good. She was good. So it's your boy Comedic Energy. Your girl go next. This show was produced by Livewire Sound and Entertainment. If you're looking to rent premium sound equipment for your next concert or podcast at a low price, go to www.livewiresoundent.com. Like I said always, man, this is produced by Livewire Sound and Entertainment. Peace. Dirty Mouth Radio.